that and I ended up wagering about 600 grand in crypto and then I ran out of crypto so then I started digging into my actual bank account which was just full of my savings from like being a kid getting like birthday money and stuff like that it was bad and yeah that's when I had my my last 400 pounds left so how did you go from 400 pounds in your bank account to 20k a month I want to say overnight because it felt like it but how much work does it actually take obviously you've gone and you've set everything up there's a lot of trial and error but on a day-to-day -day basis what does it look like for you on a day-to-day -day basis I don't do anything but once it's set up and it's it's optimized it is literally just hands off make sure that it's printing money and if it's not printing money then either you turn it off or you change something to the normal person to the average person doing 14 15 20k a month with like no real work at the age that you're at as well you're 21 like to some people might sound kind of impossible i think a lot of people in my position would be you know, probably in dubai you know doing some mad stuff <laughs> I think once you can do, not everything you want, but essentially everything you want, it doesn't become as appealing. It sold out within, I think, two hours or 40 grand. And you're like refreshing it. And it's just like going up by the thousands and thousands. Bearing in mind, I'm like, yeah, maybe 17, 18 now. Printing money. I'm saying it did over a million dollars USD in sales. Yo guys, welcome back to the Grooms Podcast. And today we sat down with Rob and he spoke about how we built an NFT project that went on to do a million pounds in revenue and then lost it all. And now is doing 20,000 pounds per month in recurring revenue through affiliate advertising. Thank you for the support guys. And make sure if you haven't already that you subscribe to the podcast and enjoy the episode. So how did you go from 400 pounds in your bank account to 20K a month? I want to say overnight because it felt like it, but affiliate marketing and throughout probably a period of five months going from literally I had £400 in my bank, Google Ads offers a promotion where if you spend £400, they give you £400 free, uh, like credit. No way. Um, so I literally spent all of that on Google Ads trying to promote this the software company. They gave me 20% recurring commissions uh, on a subscription-based model. And yeah, I kind of built that up over months and months and months, started out with 400 pounds. Once I spent that, it had a 14 day free trial. So after the 14 days, then I started getting some of that commission back in and then literally just reinvested it, reinvested it, reinvested it, scaled it, scaled it, scaled it until I hit like the, the optimal point. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how I got there. Mm. To somebody that doesn't know what you do in like in small, what is it that you actually do? Yeah, so... But most people, they'd probably know it as affiliate marketing, which is where you either create content, or maybe you're a YouTuber, you promote a link, and then you put the link in the description, something like that. That's what most people know, but I would classify it as affiliate advertising. I run Google Ads. I run paid Google Ads to softwares, um, yeah, directly to their website. I don't have a website. I don't make any videos, don't make any content at all. Literally, it's just words on a Google page. If you search for a T-shirt, there's going to be a promotion that comes up. That, for example, could be something that someone like me is doing. How much work does it actually take? Obviously, you've gone and you've set everything up. There's a lot of trial and error. But on a day-to-day -day basis, what does it look like for you? Yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's all right. It, yeah, it's kind of nuts. Uh, in theory, once a day, I would look at my spreadsheet and I'd put in how much I've spent, what the conversion rate is, uh, how many clicks I got. Just, yeah, measuring the... the the very least amount of metrics that I need to measure to make sure that things are profitable and that I'm making money, essentially. Um, but I tend to do that once a week. I'll just catch up on the whole week. It takes five to ten minutes probably, so in a month I'd be doing maybe an hour's work, tops, if I'm not trying anything new. Like, setting up the initial Google ad is the, is the hard part and optimising it is definitely takes, takes time mostly time waiting for the results to come in, waiting for the statistics to come in, so then you can adapt and change the ad to, to make it as optimal as possible. But once you've optimized it fully, there's not really many changes you need to do, unless it's something like a seasonal product or something like that, where you'd obviously be switching it on in certain months, switching it off at certain months, maybe like different times, stuff like that. But once it's set up and it's, it's optimized, it is literally just hands off, make sure that it's printing money. And if it's not printing money, then either you turn it off or you change something. And if it doesn't work, you cut it off onto the next one. What's that kind of time frame that you're looking for to get the data that you need to then make the certain adjustments that you need to make? It depends a lot on the software because some will have free trials, some won't. If it's a 14-day trial, which is pretty standard for softwares, 
you'd be looking at around a month and a half to get the initial data of whether it's going to be profitable or not. And in that time, I'd probably be spending like 10 to 15 pounds a day. Like it's not much. Obviously, it depends on the, the price of the software as well. Mm -hmm. If it's a 10 grand software, then you're going to have to spend a lot more than that to get any okay. conversions and figure out what the conversion rate is, what the lifetime value of a customer is. Um, but I can't lie, I forgot the question. But <laughs> the time frame, you answered it. Yes. Yeah, so a yeah, month and about, a half. about a month and a half initially. And then to optimize it, it could be like three to four months. It could be longer, it could be less. It depends a lot on how much the software gives you when it comes to tracking. Because I can't track, if, if it's through their website and they don't have any tracking set up, I can't track individual keyword performances. So I have to do them all one by one, turn off every single one that's working, try to test a new one, you know, test it for a week or whatever it is, a couple of days to see whether or not it converts, whether it works, um, and then switch the other ones back on. So the, the optimization phase definitely takes longer than the setting up phase. Um, and setting them up actually isn't too difficult because Google just kind of runs you through it. It's literally like business name. Put, put a few lines of text about the business. It, it's super simple to set up. Um, obviously, you want to the right words and keywords make sure that it's, it's attracting clicks because you don't want people to see your ad and then click on the same thing that you're literally advertising but just ignore your ad because you've put the wrong words or like a spelling mistake or something like that so you've got to be attention to detail for sure but how do you even stumble upon this bro yeah nuts to be honest i did not know affiliate marketing was a thing to be fair back in the days like i'd sold fortnite accounts like i used to buy and sell no fortnite accounts yeah I used to like boost people, if you know what that is, on video games. Boost is people. that where you go and yeah. you level up their account? Where, yeah, so like I'd, gone, game was, yeah, I'd yeah. Like rank them up in, in games. Because I peaked uh, oh, rank you? 40 in Europe in Overwatch. You guys know what that is? Oh, no way. Yeah, on PC. So that was good. And then, so you're a proper little gamer then? Yeah, I was back in the days. So honestly, I don't do it now and I don't know why. You've got, no t no, you've so got all the time there. in the world yeah, to game. Yeah, I know. That's, that's it. I'm like, I've got all the time. But somehow the time just disappears. Like I've booked in, like, I play tennis pretty much like three hours a day. Yeah, that's what I was doing before this. Yeah, <laughs> play tennis. I've got tennis again tonight, seven p.m. So. Yeah, yeah. I play a lot of tennis, out and about. Yeah, it's good. So, what does your day actually look like? Because I mean, to the normal person, to the average person, doing fourteen, fifteen, twenty k a month is first of all a lot of money and well done. But to do it with like no real work, yeah, at the age that you're at as well, you're twenty one. Yeah, like to some people might sound kind of impossible yeah to be fair so i posted a youtube video called like how i make eighteen thousand dollars a month doing nothing brackets it's easy or something like that yeah <laughs> it's a pretty good title to be fair yeah, thanks got like 700 <laughs> views but yeah um i posted that and then i was gonna run a google promotion on it and google wouldn't let me because it was it sounded like it was misleading clickbait title mm. even though it's not yeah um yeah um day-to-day -day life honestly it hasn't changed that much other than i'm free all the time, if that makes sense. Like, to come down and do this, for example. Mm -hmm. I had to not play tennis for as long. Like, you know, there's nothing <laughs> nothing that <laughs> I'm missing out on, really. Yeah. But, yeah, it's good because I haven't really adapt I haven't really changed my lifestyle. I had a Porsche. I literally just sold it. I had a 2019 Porsche Cayman 718. Yeah. Um, bought it in cash, like, eight months ago. I've just sold it now. So my, my lifestyle hasn't really changed. I still live with my parents. I'm literally in like a shoebox. I promise you, it's the smallest room you've ever been in. Um, but yeah, life hasn't really changed other than the fact if my friends are going on holiday somewhere, I know I can go. If my friends are going out, I know I can go. If someone wants to eat food somewhere, I can go. So yeah, at the moment, I'm just stacking cash, to be honest. Like I'm just putting money in my bank account, just letting it add up, waiting for an opportunity to put it into something, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people in my position would be you know, probably in Dubai, you know, doing some mad stuff, yeah. you know, enjoying life to the full. And I, I definitely enjoyed, I enjoy life more than I did before, obviously, because I can do whatever I want, basically. Um, but I think once you can do, not everything you want, but essentially everything you want, it doesn't become as appealing and you can just kind of carry on how, like, how you would usually be. Yeah. Before you stumbled across affiliate marketing, obviously yeah. we'll get into how you actually stumbled across it because we never properly touched on it. But yeah, sure, yeah. before that, you were involved in some NFT projects, yeah. cryptocurrencies, yeah. had some bad experiences, etc. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so back in Sev 2017, mm -hmm. I bought my first Ethereum for I think around 200 pounds back then. Not bad. Bargain. 
Yeah, real. Oh, I didn't realise it at the time. I had no idea that the <laughs> currencies were going up and down. I was like, I need Ethereum because I used to play CSGO, if you guys know it, Counter-Strike. Uh, uh, it's probably one of the biggest video games in existence. It's been around since like 2002. But they have um, loot boxes in them. Right. So you can spend five pounds, spin a case, and you might win like a 500 pound knife. You might win like a 30 quid skin, you know. Or you can also get like a 10 piece skin. So it's just gambling, essentially. And you can trade them for real money. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it's cool, but it's also a game for, like, children <laughs> with, like, heavy gambling in it. So it's kind of nuts, and that's how I got into gambling initially. And then, um, so within the game, you can buy cases, and then outside of the game, you can buy cases on, like, external websites, and the external websites will have better odds. So maybe you have, like, a 0.01% chance to get a £100 knife in, this ca- in the game. If you go to the third-party website, you have a 1% chance. So you get better odds. You have to deposit with crypto, or you have to deposit with you know actual money rather than throughout through the game. Um, so yeah, I got got into that. That's why I bought crypto to start with, and then just kind of stayed in crypto, stayed in gambling. At the time, I was like I said before, selling Fortnite accounts. I think this was around the same time. Um, How old are you at this time, by the way? Five years ago, so sixteen, seventeen. Shit. Underage. <laughs> Shouldn't have been gambling at all. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it was crypto, and crypto had literally zero regulations then. Mm-hmm. Like, even your bank account, they wouldn't stop you buying crypto because they didn't really care about mm-hmm. it. Um, so, yeah, I was at the time, I was doing, like, a lot of marketing. Like, I had a Twitter account, and I was um, selling Fortnite accounts on the Twitter account. That was how I was getting the, the audience to sell to. Um, and a guy who I used to play Minecraft with back in the days reached out to me. and was like, yo, bro, I've seen that you've got this, like, pretty decent-sized Twitter account. I'm planning this NFT project. So I've paid four grand to get the art done. I've paid like two grand to this marketing company who's done absolutely nothing. Like, will you come in? Will you do it? Um, and I'll give you like a, a cut of it. I was like, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Like, I'm already in crypto. I know it, I know a little bit about it and I've, I know how to build a community mm-hmm. around Twitter, which is where back in the days crypto used to be based. Now mm-hmm. it's more like Telegram, stuff like that. But yeah, so I agreed. We, we set off on this random journey just like to create a community around artwork there wasn't really any plan behind it there was nothing particularly revolutionary about it it was just everyone was hyped about nfts it had cool artwork and i was just out there posting trying to engage build the community we got to about i think eight thousand members in a discord ready to launch launched it sold out within i think two hours for 40 grand Sick. worth of nfts nuts to see it as well because you've got like the crypto wallet and you're like refreshing it and it's just like going up by the thousands and thousands bearing in mind i'm like yeah maybe 17 18 now i'm like like, we're printing money that's what it feels like Like, i've never seen that amount of money in my life um and then the guy who got me in to do the marketing said look i didn't expect this i didn't expect us to sell out i don't know what to do with this money like what do we do with the community I was like, look, I'll, I'll buy you out. I'll give you 15 grand and then I'll take over and I'll do it. Bearing in mind, I also had absolutely no idea what to do, but <laughs> I had the vision of like, we can make something happen. Like everyone's engaged, everyone's hyped. Let's do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that's terrible from me. Sorry. Proceed, brother. I was, I was, I was. You, took, you bought him out, you took it on, you oh, had yeah. a vision. Yeah, to go on, had a vision, um, and we did the first, I don't know if you guys know anything about NFTs, but NFTs will have, like, traits, so they could have, like, different yeah. eyes, different skin, different clothes. We were, we were on the other end of the NFT hype, bro. What was it? was dying. You were the guys that were making the money, we were the guys that were losing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I think ours was the first project on Solana that had, um, you get individual, uh, like, bonuses for being for having different traits, so, for example, one of the traits would give you access to a, a sniper, if you guys know what a sniper is, so you can, like, um, snipe coins at a certain price. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember, because it was a while ago now. Um, one of them, so I paid a development team to build a coin flip site, and then the one of the attributes got 50% of the earnings from that coin flip site. Um, I paid for a loan site to be developed, where you can buy it, like, NFT loaning system. If I don't know if you guys have heard of like Sharkify or yeah, there's quite a few of them. But yeah, I paid for someone to develop one of them, and then 
I think it was again 50% of the profits from that would go to a different trait. So it was the first NFT project that kind of split up the traits individually. Mm -hmm. So each, so you almost needed like a collection of them to get all of the benefits. Yeah. And um, which is seen more often now. Um, and that, that ended up doing insane. It did over a million dollars USD in sales at, at the time. I don't know what Solana price was then. Is this when you were the sole owner of the project? Yes. So I was literally, I did everything. I was running everything. It was not, I was literally doing like 40 hour days. It was horror. I, li I got so ill um, and I ended up giving it away. I'm well, not giving it away. Well, yeah, giving it. I gave it to someone else who had a team behind them. They were like, they had an artist, they had a developer. They had a whole kind of infrastructure built out. I gave it over to them for free because I wanted them to run out. I wanted it to be successful, but I was getting so ill because I was just so overworked. And in crypto, it's so hard to trust anyone else. Mm -hmm. Because everyone's just anonymous behind a little wallet address, you know. <laughs> Especially yeah. back then, like there was no track into Coinbase or you know you couldn't you couldn't figure out you couldn't freeze wallets you couldn't do mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. So it was definitely a dodgy time, and I got scammed more than once, as I'm sure everyone did. What's it like being? I mean, let's just go with the 17, 18 at this stage, right? Mm. Being 17, 18 years old, seeing a million dollars worth of purchases being done on a project that you basically built up from the ground. Uh, working 40 hour days like what is that like at the age of 18 fun it was fun I really enjoyed it I love that that's what you said by the way but there were there were definitely some downsides to it my parents like, I was just in my room on discord like all day just typing <laughs> wanted to DMs you know Twitter running the Twitter account posting every day so to them I was just monging it like, I was just sat on my computer, you know, playing video games or something like that. They had absolutely no idea and they couldn't understand it at all. Mm -hmm. so so they did they know you had a project worth a million dollars? Yeah, exactly. I was, trying to tell, I was trying to tell them and they were like, yeah, but it's not real money, is it? It's crypto. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But yeah, so, so that was annoying. Um, and it was also, to be fair, a lot of pressure. I kind of enjoyed it, but it would like, I'd wake up in the morning and when you load up Discord, obviously your icon goes green from grey. So it shows that you're online because I own the server I'm at the very top. Um, and it would literally, like, the chat would be like, he's awake, he's awake. Like, f like 15 different people who had just been, like, talking in the chat, like, he's awake. He hasn't scammed us yet. <laughs> like, uh, it was a lot of pressure. And, like, when I'm doing it, uh, genuinely, I did 40-hour days. And then I was sleeping for, like, 20 hours. So I would be gone for a whole day. So then when I did come back online, everyone was like, oh, relieved. But, but because I'd been asleep for so long, the floor price would have literally dropped on the project because people thought that just disappeared with all the money mm -hmm. but yeah it was nuts so yeah with the million dollars worth of transactions we had an eight percent royalty so we got about eighty thousand um and you say we but you mean I mean, you just right me, to be fair yeah yeah <laughs> but I, I mean me as the project yeah because it, it was a business essentially mm -hmm. um and i spent probably 60 grand of that putting back into the project like paying for the development of websites paying for subscriptions to platforms for people to use uh, hosting giveaways, you know, all of that, just trying to give the community life. Um, so I ended up walking away from that with about 20 grand in crypto. Um, and this was still at the same time I was getting involved with the, the CSGO cases, the, the gambling side of things. So I was putting a lot of that money back into the cases. And then I discovered online casinos, you know, <laughs> uh, like Rollbit, Trying to think of the, you know, this, you know the big ones. We don't, we well, don't. Crypto we're, ones. we're not really yeah, gambling. Yeah, like steak and yeah, stuff. steak. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like <laughs> websites like that. I don't, start, I don't gamble, by the way. Yeah, do just, not gamble. Yeah, yeah. Terrible idea. See, so like Drake and the Nelk Boys, they all use steak, don't they? Nuts. Like twenty mil on a spin or something. Yeah. yeah. They get it all. Um, it's like part of their like payment, isn't it? Like they get a shitload of crypto. Yeah, yeah. yeah so a lot of it, that. a lot of it will be like balance based on a wager. So they might get like a million pounds in balance, but they have to wager it 50 times. So they have mm. to wager 50 mil, and then whatever they have left at the end of that, then they'll be able to withdraw it. Yeah, yeah. And based on the house edge, then they come out with, you know, like 200K or something like that. Still nuts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a, l a lot of it is not real money. Because at the same time I was gambling, I was also talking with a lot of people who were involved in running these. Um, I worked with a few of them for like the marketing and stuff like that. So I was definitely like heavily involved in it. Um, so I know a lot of the stuff behind the scenes if that makes sense um but yeah so i was funneling the money into that and i ended up wagering about 600 grand in crypto um oh no not in crypto like half a million crypto which is nuts and then 
I ran out of crypto, so then I started digging into my actual bank account, which was just full of my savings from like being a kid, getting like birthday money and stuff like that. <laughs> I was just rinsing it. Then uh, I was a lifeguard at the same kind of time, so like any 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 salary from that going straight onto the slots, it was bad. And yeah, that's when I had my my last four hundred pounds left, and then that's when I figured out that like I need to do something, e- either for two reasons, like I need to do something so that I can actually enjoy life. Like I need money. And number two, if I want to carry on gambling, I also need money. So, it was Wait, so the driving, the driving <laughs> force of sorting your shit out was to gamble. In a, in a way, yeah. It, it, Were you addicted? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm, I'm quite lucky. I, I think I get addicted to things very, very easily. But as soon as I'm bored of it, I drop it immediately. Like gambling, I, I'm so bored of it now. I've, you know, like you spin the slot over and over again. It's so boring. But back then, it was like. I can win so much money. I actually had an interesting convo with um, with a past podcast guest. We're, we went to train together. And he turned around and he said to me, because I've always said that I feel like if I started gambling properly, I would easily get addicted to it. Like yeah. I've got an extremely addictive personality. And he just turned around to me in the gym. This guy, like the way he thinks and the way he puts words, to, like, words together and articulates it's, it's, it's quite complex. And he just turned around and he just went to me. He was like, hey, because you're a dopamine-driven individual, aren't you? I was like, oh, my God, I am. He was like, yeah, but you just focus your the where, where you get your dopamine from, from the right places, like training and like yeah. building a business. I was yeah. like, oh, makes sense. Yeah. That's why I enjoy, like, well, why I think I would enjoy gambling and why I think I'd enjoy these other bad things, such as going out, et cetera, but I just choose not to do them and yeah. I get my dopamine from other places. Yeah. It's probably the same as you, bro. Yeah, 100%. Like, now that I'm you know, doing sport, doing activity, doing well in business, you know, I've got a good network of people around that I can talk to. Mm. You get all of those things that you're looking for in the bad things. You can also get them from the good things. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things that I've, I've learned is everyone's got vices. Everyone's got things that they're, you know, smoking, and, you know, all of, mm-hmm. all of this stuff. Everyone's got something that they probably shouldn't be doing and they know they shouldn't be doing. And it's kind of like a downward spiral of like, well, I'm already doing that, so I might as well do that. A lot of vices will come with, like, two. So, like, you may, you may be smoking and then happen to also drink, right? Pretty standard. A lot of people do that. But vices tend to come in pairs from what I've heard and seen. What um, was your second one? <laughs> it's going to hit us with something wild now. More gambling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what were you gambling on? Was it just slots? Yeah, slots, blackjack. A lot of blackjack, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, bro, I was doing like eight thousand pound hands, like nuts, nuts money. With what bread, oh, though, bro? Because it, well, it was twenty grand, and when I started gambling, I was winning. Right. So I got to like fifty, sixty, and then by the time I ended, I ended, I, I lost like seven grand in total. Like, got to leave whilst you're ahead, man. Yeah, yeah. Got leave, got to leave the game before. That's the game why I got hooked you. in as well. I was like, I'm printing money, like this is so <laughs> free. Like, I get to just spin this and I make money. Whatever happens to anybody listening at home, do not use gambling <laughs> as a way not. to make money. We can laugh about this now because yeah. you've quite evidently moved on from yes, that, yeah. and you're putting kind of your time to good use. Well, I say your time to good use. <laughs> just play tennis all day, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying. We've yeah, moved yeah. past it. You if you were tennis, s- at least. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. <laughs> I only started playing again like three months ago, so oh, okay. we're getting back in. Hey, he's doing three-hour days, bro. It's going to yeah. be all right, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. If you were still in it, I think this conversation would be very different. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know if I'd still be here if I was still at it, because fuck, like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It's one of the worst things that you can get into gambling. Yeah, I think so. I think it's also quite a good thing that you got a little bit of money, you played with the money, and you learnt the lessons before you turned 20. That's it, yeah. Like, I think that's also... Imagine if you kind of fell into that habit where you're at now. Yeah, yeah. Then it would be like... It would be devastating, literally devastating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky in... What, I struggle to give advice to people that are like 30, 35, because I'm in a position where I've got no mortgage, I don't have kids, I don't have you know a lease on a car, I haven't got anything weighing me down. So I can afford to take the risks. You're just stacking mm-hmm. bread. Yeah, I'm just stacking, Can't stacking lose money. Anything. And yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no major risk. Like I could, in theory, put it all on black tomorrow, and I'd still be fine. Double your money. <laughs> <laughs> I could double my money. 
Yeah, but yeah, I'll say he's, he's gonna leave. <laughs> he's gonna leave here and be like, you know what? H had something. He was taught you. He's gonna get that it'd H be, back. It'd be an awesome story, man. It'd be pretty cool. It'd be like a, like no, a scene out of a movie. No, don't do that, bro. We're supposed to inspire I'm and joking. motivate no, on this I, podcast. No, don't definitely don't do that, bro. That would be a terrible. I'll not idea. be doing that. Just imagine if you lost it all. But I'm saying, even if I did lose it all, like it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like nothing's gonna collapse around me. I've still got income coming in. It is what it is. So now's the time to take risks. But yeah, gambling isn't a risk. Gambling is you will lose because it is statistically facts. Yeah, house always wins. Yeah, house always wins, literally. Speaking of taking risks and your kind of position right now and where you're at, why aren't you dabbling and touching into other kind of online spaces and, and trying to kind of expand what you've already built? If it takes one hour a week for you yeah. to fulfill, I don't know, 20K a month, why are you not filling your days with other stuff that aren't just tennis to take it from 20 to 100? It's a difficult one because like, when you're hungry, when, you, when you've got that drive, you've got that motivation, you, you need to make money. But it's so easy to do. Once you're in that, like, I'm, I'm, ba- I'm basically comfortable. Mm. right? I don't need to make money. I don't, my lifestyle would not change from 20K a month to 100K a month, I don't think. Um, Maybe go to some nicer tennis courts. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's none nearby, but the nicest <laughs> ones I got. <laughs> but doesn't that things like I don't know, retiring your parents or buying that dream car or moving out of your box room? Do these things not give you that kick up the ass to go and go to the next level? Is that not something that you're thinking about and aspiring towards? Well, to be fair, my parents are pretty old. My dad's right. already retired. All oh, right, okay. And my mum enjoys her work, so mm-hmm. she could retire. Just she pulling out of thin air, yeah, though. Yeah. You get what I'm saying. With, with, with the room, like I could move out. I could go to Thailand tomorrow, right? Mm. I could live in a penthouse somewhere, probably for pretty cheap. Mm. Um, I don't. Know, I just. I don't think it's authentic to me. Um, if I did make more money, again, I think I'd just put it in the bank account and just stack it up. I don't like. It would be nice to have more money, of course. Everyone would want more money all the time, but I've got enough to live on and. I almost think like at what point is enough enough, which is quite a depressing way to look at it because I definitely have like, I'll, I think I'm going through a season. I think you have a lot of seasons, like some seasons you'll be locked in, some seasons, you know, you just lounge around. I think I'm in, I'm in a lounge around phase at the moment, but I'm still being tactical with what I'm doing. Like I'm stacking cash. I'm not wasting it on, like I had a Porsche, but I drove it for eight months, put like 8,000 miles on it and I've, took like a t- three round loss on it. So again, like I bought it at a good price and I sold it at a decent price and I got my use out of it. I didn't have to service it. I didn't replace any brake pads. It's like 300 any pounds a month for a horse. Exactly. For a, a horse, a Porsche basically. Exactly, it's nuts. Yeah. So like, I'm still enjoying life. I'm still having fun. Like, yes, I could go and rent a Ferrari for two grand a day. Like, it's just stupid. Mm-hmm. Definitely don't. There's do. no point. Um, it's quite refreshing that you say that actually because I feel like most people that we've sat down and had conversations with are always thinking about what's next mm. and you've kind of made me think differently because you're at that stage and it's like well I could go further mm. you're quite but, clearly happy but I don't really yeah, need it. to I've, yeah. got, I've got what I need I'm, I'm, f- I'm literally free there's, there's no I feel like you know like more money more problems the higher up you get the more things there's going to be issues with, like HMRC are going to look into, you know, your tax, and then you're going to get letters through the post, post all the time, stuff like that. I haven't got to the point where I have to register a business. I'm still self-employed, so there's not. I don't have to submit a tax return every three months, something like that. In theory, and my plan is for next year, I won't be in the UK at all, mm-hmm. and I will not be a tax resident anywhere, so I won't pay tax anywhere. And I can do that because I don't have any ties to the UK. I don't have a house. I don't have any assets mm-hmm. tying me here. Um, so... Yeah, you know where you go? Um, definitely Thailand for a bit. I've been to Koh Samui okay. for a mastermind, so I'd like to go back there. Um, and honestly, just hop around pretty much the whole world. Like cool. Colombia, I definitely want to go to. Most of Europe. Maybe even places like Russia, China, North Korea. Like, fuck it. Russia well. and China would be a pretty cool yeah. one. Man, those types It'd be places. nuts. So pretty you're speaking of North Korea, have you watched the interview? No, I haven't. With, no, I watched the who? interview. With what? The interview on Netflix, the film. No, no. 
with Seth Seth Rogen. Oh my God, bro! James Franco. Franco. James yeah. Franco and Kim Jong Un's in it as well. Not the real one, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine. Uh, but it's a brilliant thing. They go and they interview the obviously Kim Jong Un in North Korea, and it's yeah. like gives you like a bit of an insight as to what it might be like. No, it's definitely it's not like the film, bro. No, what I'm saying is like how North Korea is like. Yeah, portrayed yeah, yeah. in it and like his stuff and but obviously it's a comedy it's a piss take okay right got but it's fucking brilliant so how did you how did you stumble across the affiliate market and then were you just yes in a bit of a rut you came down lost all your bread gambling so i was i got i think everyone's probably if, if they're watching this podcast they're probably in this phase of like they want to do something they know they want to do something they're like watching educational videos you know they're looking into loads of different things drop shipping e-commerce all of this all of these kind of stuff and that they're trying to learn as much as possible and then find what clicks for them. And I was kind of in that stage of, you know, Iman Gardzi looking at, like, a, an agency, mm. looking at... Been there. <laughs> <laughs> like, personal brands, all of that kind of stuff. Look, looking at all of it, and none of it really was what I wanted to do. I didn't want to have to handle the logistics of, like, shipping out orders, returns, having to deal with customers. I didn't want the headache, basically. I wanted to make money easily, as everyone does. Really, but at some point you got made the sacrifice. But yeah, I was looking into that and I came across a YouTube series where a, a person was documenting them building their company. Um, and I went to the website, had a look at their company. I was like, you know, what, like this company kind of resonates with me and it's something I'd love to work for. I'd love to work with them. And then I saw they had an affiliate program with a 20% commission for like recurring on subscriptions. And I was like, you know what? I don't know how to make good YouTube videos. I don't know how to make good content. I don't have a big personal brand. I don't have anywhere to promote this. Let me just throw up some Google ads. I'd never made Google ads before. I literally just, I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. It took me like 15 minutes to set up the ad. Started running it like 10 quid a day. Bearing in mind, I wanted to hit my 400 pounds so I could get the extra 400 pound credit. And my logic was, I'll test it with this 400 pounds. If it doesn't work, I'll find a different software and test it with the free 400 pounds. And if it does work but it's not profitable. It may be profitable because of the free credit, so it's less risk. It, like, if my cost per click was five pounds and the lifetime value of the customer was four pounds, if, if I spent the, each five pounds of my 400 pounds and then the 400 pounds free credit, then my cost per customer would have been two pound 50 for the first 400 pounds, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So then it would have been profitable. Even though it wouldn't be profitable long term, it would have been profitable just for that point. In the short, yeah. Exactly, so it was less risk to test it. That's dope, man. Yeah, I got, I got, I did get super lucky, and it is what it is. But um, I, I think you create of, your own luck. Exactly. I hear, a lot, I hear a lot of quotes about luck, and you know, you create your own luck. Definitely, I think you position yourself, and you have to be in a position exactly. to to make the most of opportunities when they present themselves to you. If I was in a closed mindset, if I wasn't looking for an opportunity, then I never would have even bothered trying it. I wouldn't have even thought it was possible, right? But because I was looking for the opportunity. And then I found the opportunity and I was able to take advantage of it. There's multiple, different, in that position. there's multiple different steps that you went through before coming across that website and yeah. even thinking about the affiliate link, then doing the due diligence to think, okay, let's run some Google ads and setting it up. Yeah. There's things that came before that that 99% don't do. Maybe 99.9% do not do. Mm. But then you're the 0.1% that was quote unquote lucky yeah. Yeah, when your yeah. first kind of month of recurring revenue starts coming in. Was Google Ads for affiliate marketing, was that just completely off a whim because you didn't want to make YouTube videos and content yeah. and stuff? Completely your unique idea? I, yeah, I was like, it's just text. So yeah, I don't have to make videos, I don't have to make photos. Like, I can use Photoshop, I can use a video editor, but I don't know how to make... I don't have a, a nice camera like these ones, I don't have the big lights, I don't have a studio. So I can't compete against video ads, I can't compete that kind of stuff. But there was no one bidding on it. There, there were no sponsored search terms for that company. So I was like, you know what, I'll just throw it up and give it a go. And yeah, I had never used Google Ads before and I, I hadn't watched any videos on affiliate marketing. I didn't know affiliate marketing was a thing until I was about, I think, two or three months in when I realized what I was doing was affiliate marketing because <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for a... Affiliate advertising, right? Affiliate advertising. The fact that you were so like oblivious else. to what you were actually doing probably mm. worked in your favor. Yeah, I think so. That probably would have put limitations mm. on the route that you were going down. I always wonder, like, if, if you took Usain Bolt for example, as a kid, like let's say there were two of them, exactly mm. the same person. One grew up in the United Kingdom where the, he knew the world record, he knew all of this stuff, and then a kid in Africa, you know, like they don't know the world record, wherever it is in the world, 
there's no he doesn't know the world record yeah. right he doesn't know what the what the limit is so he just pushes and pushes and pushes i wonder like what the difference would be in what they'd be able to achieve because of that the the limited it's a crazy results. perspective yeah mm-hmm. you can also flip it though and think the guys that do have the targets and the stuff to look look towards could be more motivated than the guy that's just out there running because he loves it. For, yeah, I think, to be honest with you, I think I kind of agree because it's, with, uh, I mean, we've spoke about it before, but the four-minute mile, like no one had it. Mm. It was yes. deemed impossible yeah. until one person broke it and then the year after, like 200 people broke the four-minute yeah. mile. Yeah. It's the exact same yeah. because there was limitations on it. Everybody thought that it was genuinely impossible to do, but then yeah. straight away after, four loads of people did that it. That plays and then it into what normal. I've just said. Because the four minute mile would be the quote unquote world record for Usain Bolt. No, but no, yeah, one, but no, no one nobody, could hit it. It, it, was, it was deemed impossible, so nobody ever did it. And then once one person did it and that limitation went, because there's no limitation on the person that doesn't understand what the right. world record is. I'm with you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally the exact same. I, think, I don't want to get too deep into like mental health and stuff like that because I don't have much experience or knowledge mm. with anything negative to do with that. But I definitely think the more you think about something, the bigger a problem it becomes. So, like, if you think, oh, the four minute, like, it's impossible, you kind of build it up in your mind, bigger and bigger and bigger, because that's what you're thinking about, that's your, what you're aiming for. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you don't think about it, you just do it. I think it's easier. What would you say are your best traits, bro? I would say logic, statistics. Everything you do has a cost, and an opportunity cost, so cost of time. Everything you do has a as something you could do, something else you could do, and you have to make a choice between them. And I think I make a good choice when it comes to what to do statistically, other than when it's gambling. <laughs> that was a bad choice. <laughs> but I, th- I think I learned a lot of it from gambling, to be fair. <laughs> with, if it, we were blackjack, you probably looked at statistics. Exactly, you were probably yeah. like, oh, two to one? It's not bad. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you know the percentages. <laughs> and you make you are getting <laughs> too excited when blackjack gets brought up. <laughs> I actually don't gamble, by the way. It's I'm going to leave, and I have to leave. You might going to run to a local <laughs> casino for a little... <laughs> Open stake. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's logic. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. I think okay. you articulate quite well. I, I, I don't want you to take offence to this, but I've been... Obviously, I didn't have too much information on you before you mm. came, but I, like, you pleasantly surprised me. Happy days. Mm-hmm. Not to say that I thought that you were going to be like some absolute no, donut that's come on here, but... It's refreshing to sit with someone who articulates and thinks about things. Yeah, this I'm, way. I'm glad I come across well, to be fair, because I, I did wonder what it would be like. I kind of pictured it the night before. I was like, ha, like, what, what, what would the interaction be like? So, mm-hmm. yes. Wait, how have we performed then? Like, what do you think of us then? Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> I, it's, like, I feel comfortable. I feel like I've known you guys for like a decent amount of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. That, yeah. that shows that we... Are kind of good at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Our job is to make you feel comfortable in sharing your story, and, and I feel like if from what you've just said, we're doing that. So Definitely. thank you, bro. In terms of, so you, it's a software, yeah. and you're women it. You decided to run Google Ads. Yeah. You said obviously the you get the four hundred pound free in credit, etc. Yeah. How long did it take for you to genuinely start seeing results? And then when we like, oh, okay, I'm onto something now. So because it wasn't a click of a finger and you started doing $20,000 a month. No, no, no. That was probably seven or eight months in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, was, it, it gradually built up very, very quick. Compounding because it's yeah, recurring because, revenue. Yeah, exactly, revenue. because it's a subscription. Um, their churn rate's about 10%. Ah, oh, that's not bad at all, exactly. is it? Exactly. So if I refer 1,000 customers in the first month, I get that payment. Plus next month, I would expect another nine, those 900 mm-hmm. to stay on. Plus I've referred another 1,000. So then it's 19,000, and then, yeah, it adds up. And I remember just as I started it, so it's got, f- it's got a 14-day free trial on it. So I remember when I started, I was like, okay, I'll just put a little bit of money into it, run the maths, see, is it going to work? The moment I knew it worked, I upped the, up the scale. So it was like 50 pounds a day, and I was like, this is, this, is, this is big money now. <laughs> and then I upped it to 100, and 150, and it was like, ugh, I can't remember the maths. It was like four grand that was coming out of my bank a month to run ads, but I was getting back like four or five times that. I was like, this is nuts. So, I, but as I started it, I'd just run the maths of like, I calculated the churn rate, I calculated the, what I thought the lifetime value of the customer would be, uh, stuff like that, to figure out kind of a projection of where it could go. Logic. Yeah, logic, maths. And I, 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 said, to a, I said to a friend, 
just started this thing and I think I'm going to make like 140 grand this year. And he was like, what? Bearing in mind at the time I'd made like, <laughs> I'd made like two grand from it. I'm picturing him on the other end of the phone, like one minute, mate. Last, it was last week, you're doing eight, it's eight not grand. a roulette table, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said it, I was like, I think I'm going to make like 140 grand this year. And it turned out I literally did like just around that, dead on, from, mm-hmm. the, from the point I started to one year. Sick. So I calculated it pretty well. But yeah, I remember him at the time. He was like, "Yeah, cool." Like, just brushed yeah, it off. Yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. As you would, I, yeah, as yeah. any normal person would. I actually spoke with a a client of ours. His dad now mm. works in uh, in his business, and I asked him a question the other day because he, he sold two businesses for a decent amount of money. Uh, he'd been doing business for like forty years or however long, thirty years. And I actually asked him. I was like, "What's your best piece of advice that you could give me in terms of business?" And he said to me, the best thing that I did was focus on the details. And that's exactly what you did. Mm. I was like, okay. I was like, what details do you mean? He was like, just everything. You just go into de- details with everything. But like, you had a goal and you went into detail with it. And then you achieved it. Yeah. The one thing I would say though, going back to your last point, mm. is Usain Bolt, living in England that knows the world record. Yes. The one that doesn't. Yeah. Did you put the limitation on yourself as well? I think it's a limitation with the amount of customers the business gets. So there's only a set amount I can spend on ads and it be profitable. Mm-hmm. So you have to work out the like like the equilibrium l- between... It's like the law of diminishing returns. Exactly, it? that's it. The more I spend, the more the cost per click is, and then the less I'll get in profit. So you have to kind of figure it out, and I don't want to amplify my numbers too much. Like, in theory, I could spend probably five times the amount and get back five times the... Like, get back, like, two times the amount. So the profit margin would be way less, but I could say, oh, I'm making 50 grand a month. Yeah. You know? I could say it, but I'd still be spending 30 grand on ads, so the profit would still be around the same. I was listening to Leeds the other day, uh, $100 million Leeds from Hormozy, and he said when, on his ads, predominantly meta, he was like, you can start low to figure it out, and then once you find something that works, spend more, Yeah. but then you need to spend a lot more. Yeah, your cost is more, but you're actually making more money. So... Don't yeah. if if like, if you upped your stuff and you got two times back, yeah, your profit margin on the whole thing might be less. Yeah, but the actual stuff that comes into you might still be more, no? Yeah, hypothetically, yeah. yes, but it's also like higher risk. Or higher not. risk, and as well, like <clears throat> I don't want to go into it too in depth, but at the moment I'm keeping myself under the VAT threshold. Right, so okay. I'll only withdraw like ninety five thousand, just under ninety five thousand from the website this year. And then I'll wait till the next tax year to withdraw the next chunk of it. So I'm trying to keep myself under the VAT threshold so I don't have to register for that, even though technically I'd be exempt from it because it's outside the UK. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, and then you're looking at, you'd be in the tax bracket, the highest rate tax bracket. So then you lose your £1,000 um, interest allowance. You lose your initial 12500 So you really have run the numbers then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Unless, unless you're earning like, you've got to be well, I think like 150 k it's just not worth it. And still, they're taking a massive chunk of it. So if I can split it over years, I'm going to come home with more money in my pocket, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you told us off camera that you're dealing with a couple of different clients. What's yeah. the split? Well, I wouldn't say software clients, software. kind of software, software. slash partners, yeah. slash companies. Or yeah, affiliate programs. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the split between them? Yeah, so the, f- the first one is probably 90 95%. And the other two are ones that I've just started out testing. Is the the oh well, okay? So the ninety five percent is the one that you started on, right? That's yeah. 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 You know, now that you've said that, rather than trying to sorry to interrupt the question, but just now that you've said that, I've actually understood what you've done. So a better way to scale rather than trying to get a two row ass a, a two return on ad spend on fifty k mm-hmm. with the one software, mm-hmm. if you can get a five row ass spending four grand on three different and softwares, into different softwares, it's lower yeah. risk, yeah, and also it's going to cost you less. Yeah, and you Effectively, diversify yeah. it. So if one if one software up, updates their terms and conditions, says, look, you're not allowed to bid on our brand name anymore, or you're not allowed to run ads at all for our affiliate program, or, I don't know, that Google Ads suspends the account, you know, it can happen. You, you'll be diversified. So again, yeah, it's less risk and kind of higher reward as well, I would say. Because mm. once you do it more than once, it's kind of a proven method. So, yeah. In terms of, let's say, for instance, James sat at home listening to the pod. 
Hi, James. What's the... What's up, James? <laughs> there might be a James list. <laughs> probably is, to be fair. Probably Talking not. Directly. Um, What's up, James? What steps would you give him to do... What did you call it again? Affiliate... Affiliate advertising. Affiliate advertising. To get from... Four hundred pounds or five hundred is four hundred pounds really the em- entry point? Yeah. Could someone do it with less? You could do it with less, but you wouldn't get the free bonus. Okay, so, so four hundred pounds ideal starting point. Yeah, for sure. Which accessible most amount? Can get to yeah. yeah. What are the necessary steps that someone would need to take to get to twenty thousand, eighteen thousand dollars per month? Yeah, not to do a self promotion, but I did upload like a full YouTube video, literally breaking it all down step by step. But what I would do is start off by looking at things you're interested in. Often the, the things you know most about are the things you're interested in and you can niche down very easily and find softwares within those niches. So like I'm not interested in football, so I don't know anything about football, but there could be like a, a football training app software thing, right? That I would have no idea about, so I wouldn't be bidding on it. And Yeah, so if you've got any interests, look into those interests, look into softwares in those interests and have a look, do they have an affiliate program? It's always a good start. If they don't have an affiliate program, you can still send them an email. They may be interested in you running ads for them on, on like an agreement, more of like a partnership kind of thing where you sign a contract, stuff like that. But it's definitely still an option available there. Um, and then li- literally just start running ads. Like open a Google ad account, make sure you sign up with the Google ad promotion. And yeah, just, just fill in, the, it literally walks you step by step. Put the business name, put... You know, a bit, little bit of text about it. Do they have a free trial? Put that in the title, you know? Do you have a, a brand logo for them? Then put that. If they don't, maybe whisk one up so it doesn't look unprofessional or spammy. Um, and yeah, just give it a go. Like, start with five, ten pounds a day. Depends a little bit on the, the margins. If it's, if it's a, like I said before, if it's a thousand pound product and you're going to get a 500 pound commission, you're going to have to spend at least 500 pounds to figure out whether or not that converts. It is, I'm not going to say it's gambling because it's not gambling, but it's statistically like you could spend £500 and get no one and then you could spend another £500 and get 10 signups. Mm. So you have, to, you have to make sure that you've spent enough money to get the statistics to actually figure out if it's profitable or not. And that, that takes a lot of money, to be fair, and a lot of time just to get the, the overall averages. And then once you've got the averages, scale it. I'm very impressed by you, bro. Genuinely. I like the way you think. I like the simplicity, to be honest with you. And contentness. Simple brain. (laughs) Not in terms of, not in like a way that I'm trying to violate you, but I like you happy with the simple things in life. And I respect that a lot more than, I don't know, some people that are chasing these materialistic items. Genuinely. I'm sure I'll have a phase. I was going to say, where do you see yourself in like 10 years? Hopefully still alive. (laughs) <laughs> That'd be a good start. Yeah, what we're grateful, right? Yeah, still here, still healthy, doing well. Yeah, I don't know. Is there something that like tickles your fancy? Like, I would, I'd love to yeah. own a shisha I'd, lounge. To or be fair, I'd love to own some physical businesses. I'd love to own like a coffee shop. Mm. I'd love to own like a tire shop. I'd love it. Like, if my parents need maintenance, they can go to my shop and get it done. If they want a coffee, they can go to my coffee shop and get it for free. You know, that would be sick. Um. Yeah, so, so maybe in 10 years I'll own some kind of, like a, some, some local businesses. Mm. I'd definitely like that. It'd be good. And like a, bring, a, bring a, a good community aspect, especially where I live, a lot of the businesses are shutting down, which is the same for most high streets. So it'd be nice to kind of revive that. I had, um, I had a period where I went through, putting, like I'd write down what, what I wanted in, in years to come. And it'd be like, you know, I want to be fit and healthy. I want my family to be healthy. I want my f- friends to be healthy. Stuff like that. Um, and one of the big ones was the businesses. Um, yeah, so potentially own some sort of local business. I'm not too fussed if they make money. Like, if it's just a business that runs and it can sustain itself like, and I can pay the employees, like, well, I'd love to do that. It, like, it doesn't have to be about me. If, if I've got more than enough money to live on because I'm just piling up cash, then I can give good lives to other people as well, which I think would be sick and... Super fulfilling. That's beautiful. That. But it's if definitely a, a, a big step away and I have no experience with it. So. Does what you do now fulfill you? I wouldn't say so, no. Because to be fair, with the software, it does benefit people. So it's, it's a nice that I'm getting to promote a business that does help people. Mm-hmm. But I don't have any involvement in that. I don't see the success. I don't see 
people benefiting from it? So I would say no. Financially, yes. And it gives me freedom, which is nice. But yeah, I would say no. The thing that I started thinking when Chris asked that question was like, is there, obviously, you kind of answered it, but is there like, not something that just like really tickles your fancy. It's like, mm. right, let me see if I can change. Like, obviously, I know you said about changing people's lives. If you can give people a good wage, mm. parents can go and get free coffee or get their car fixed, for instance, wh- whatever it was, mm. maintenance somewhere. Is there nothing that you really look at and you're like, what if I like really like created this app or whatever it was, or, or I created this software that could genuinely like really change people's businesses or their health or whatever it was. Yeah, I wish there their was. tennis ability. I wish there was, but at the moment, no. But you got to remember, like, I'm still 21. Like, I've got a, a long time to mm-hmm. figure out whatever it is. And like before, it's, it's about putting myself in the right position so that when I do have the idea or when I, you know, finally decide what it is I want to do, I'm, I'm in a position where I can literally just go all in, focus on it, laser focus, and outperform anyone else because I'm fully into it, whereas everyone else, you know, split attention, stuff like that. One piece of advice for... James, listening at home. How old is it? Really not. Shout out James, man. 17, 18. He's not sure what to do. Because some people are surely going to try affiliate advertising. Yeah. Might not work out. I would say aim for failure, not success. Which sounds quite deep, to be fair. But I, I like the analogy of a salesperson going door to door. And every door they knock on, they try and get a sale. Every time they don't get the sale, they're disappointed in it. But instead, they call up the person, they're like, look, I'm going to quit. They call up the manager, they're like, look, I'm going to quit. And the manager says, look, instead of trying to sell to every door, just n- try to knock on 100 doors. Aim, aim to just do the work. Don't aim for the result. Um, and then the, the results will find you, and you'll feel more fulfilled along the way because your, your goal is the journey, not the yes. Jordan Peterson says something very similar to that. It, it might have been when says, I heard it. He says, um, aim low rather than aiming high. So, for instance, like his example was like, you're aiming low for um, going to the gym. So, rather than aiming to go every single day of the week, mm. aim to go two or three times. And then once you exceed two or three times, which is relatively easy, mm. you're going to be over the moon with yourself. Like, pretty similar to what you said, aim yeah. for failure. Yeah, to be fair, yeah. Before we wrap up, bro, can anybody do it? Yeah, 100%. Well... If, if you've got £400, <laughs> and as well, you can do it in other countries. Some countries will have different logistics behind it. I'm assuming if, you've got, if you're watching this podcast, you've got internet, you've got some sort of money, and if you don't have some sort of money, you can you know, clean a car and get 20 quid and you know, build it up slowly. You can, you can get there. So, yeah, I would say, yes, it is possible for anyone. Anybody. Anybody. Vamos. Love days. that, bro. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you so much for coming down, bro. I know you travelled far. Um, and we've got to cut it short because we've got a couple of meetings that we've got to got to attend to. But um, but yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much. Maybe we can touch base in the near future and do a number two, go into a little bit more detail. Yeah, sounds good. Um, to all of you guys at home, thank you so much for, for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notification on so you get notified every time we release a podcast. And we'll see you in next week. Love, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace!